We always wanna make our websites faster. One of the best ways you can make yours faster is to serve the right size image in the context that it's in. So for example, if you have a blog post, you might have a beautiful big image that's being loaded. That needs to be loaded efficiently for sure. But also when you go to the list view, you don't wanna just scale down that big image. You wanna have a smaller version of that image, literally another version of that image that's being rendered out. Now we could do this manually, but it's a little bit tricky to have that happen. And it's also tricky to scale that up across multiple projects. So for that reason, we're gonna be using Cloudflare Images. Cloudflare Images makes this really simple to create variations of the images that we want to display in the correct context. We can even blur images and there's a lot of different transformations we can do. But the idea here is we wanna see how we can implement it using Python and of course, Django. And we're gonna be bringing it into the Django admin. I'll show you what it looks like in just a moment. But the idea here is a highly available service that makes it really easy to speed up our website just because of our images and how we actually render them out. Let's take a look at a demo right now. First off, thanks to Cloudflare for sponsoring this series. Let's see the end result as to what it is that you're gonna be building. It's gonna be right here. So inside of the Django admin, we can see our current image. Yes, we upload an image file and then it actually gets rendered out. If we actually take a look at this image, yes, it's embedded in the Django admin. That's really straightforward to do. We can see the URL is coming directly from Cloudflare. We can also see that the image HTML has a width of 320. If we actually look at the size of the image itself, we can see that the rendered size is also 320. This is pretty fantastic. Now, if I wanted to actually change this or see what ends up happening, we can go into Cloudflare. We can take a look at various variants in here. I've got an admin variant, a blurred variant, and the default public variant. All of these things I have complete control over and I can just make them right now. Let's go ahead and create a new variant here. I'm gonna call this variant admin-demo. I'm gonna go ahead and add this new variant in here. All right, let's get rid of that dash in there and just use admin demo like that in camel case. I'm gonna change this to 500 as a width and then 500 as a height. Those are those max values that it will automatically scale down. Notice that I can do all sorts of things in here as well. We've got customization options for blurring if I wanted to. Let's blur it just a little bit just to see what this variation looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And of course it creates this variation. Now I could jump into the Django admin to see how it changes, or I could just look inside of Cloudflare itself, grab one of my uploads here, and I can see here's my admin demo. There it is, 500 by 500, and it's blurred a little bit. There's the admin version that we just looked at. Here's a completely blurred version. Here's the default version, and it actually is scaled to make sure that it's nice and efficient when we go to actually load it. Now inside of our code, which is of course available at our GitHub at cfe.sh slash GitHub, and I also have a reference blog post that goes through all of this step-by-step. -step. Links are gonna be down below. But the idea is if I wanted to actually show this in the admin, this is how simple it's gonna be. First off, in my allowed variants here, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in that admin demo, just like that. This is a URL that will build out. There's a lot of things you can do here. But then I'll just jump into the Django admin, grab that variant, put in admin demo, and we'll jump back into the admin. I'll refresh in here and boom, just like that, you have a global change that you can have across all of your images that you're gonna go and upload into your Django project that gets rendered on the blogs as you see fit. Now granted, I keep this focus to the Django admin, mostly because this is now relevant to anything else in Django. It's not exactly a beginner Django course, but it certainly is something that can really speed up and help your projects. So now what I recommend that you do is take a look at this blog post because we're gonna be working off of that. Let's jump in. Since I'm working off of the blog post right here, I'm actually gonna be skipping step one where you set up the Django project you do the installations and start the apps. If you haven't done this before, check out my Try Django series or just go through the blog post. Both things will give you exactly the same code that we're gonna be working off of, which of course is step two. All of this code is also on GitHub, so check out this repo here. The actual first commit or one of the first commits is the initial Django project naps. That's what I'm gonna be working off of as well. So just keep that in mind while we jump in. Now, first and foremost, your requirements that you have installed are most likely going to be exactly this. So if you don't have these requirements, be sure to get them now, create that Django project, create a couple apps, and then you'll have something like this. 
Now, first and foremost, the blog itself, a blog app, this is a good example of when you might want to actually use scaled images, right? So the blog post itself, you might have it listed out in places where you have a thumbnail and then rendering out the end blog post. You want that to be a scaled image as well. You don't necessarily want it to be the full size, especially if you have a full size that's massive, which you might have with a lot of detail on some of your blog post images. The point here is to not worry about those things. Regardless of what you upload as the blog post image, you want it to be scaled correctly so it's fast and efficient. So one of the things you might do with a blog post of some kind is you'd come in here and create class blog and post model, something like that, or maybe just blog post. And then you come in and you do something like models.model, right? And so you would have a title, models.char field, max length of some kind, right? So let's say 120. And then you would create all of the fields related to the blog post itself. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy some of these fields in here and we'll paste them in. This comes directly from the actual blog post that I wrote for this one altogether. But the idea here is you might actually want to go and do the default method, which is something I've talked about a lot, which is models.image field, and then creating an image field that actually handles the image upload itself. Now, generally speaking, this is fine in Django, but as soon as you wanna make things more efficient, this is where Cloudflare images really shine. You no longer use this image field because the image field will not actually make efficient versions of the image. You can, you could build out your own image pipeline from it where you had image two, image three, and so on, and then you'd have a bunch of references in here, but it starts to get very convoluted very quickly. So instead of having this image field here, we are gonna have a different model altogether. And that of course is where images comes in, this app itself. I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the image model that I'll be using and we'll copy that entire thing here. This is coming directly from the blog post. There we go, so we've got our image model. We can have a title, this is fairly optional. The main thing here is the Cloudflare ID. This ID is gonna be the actual reference to the image that we upload into our account. Now, if you're familiar with something like S3 storage or R2 storage, the idea is this is not the key. This is just a Cloudflare ID. Cloudflare is managing all of the images for us. So all we need is the ID itself, that's it. And so really we want to reference that in our blog post. This is how we're gonna use the images going forward within our blog post. So from images.models, we'll go ahead and import that image model class and then we'll go ahead and create it as a foreign key in here, just like that, right? So you might be familiar with this process as well, hopefully you are, but that's kind of the idea here. Now, every once in a while, you might also wanna do something like this, where you bring in your user and you create it as like an author of some kind, right? That makes sense for a blog post. Maybe you add publishing, maybe you add some other things. I'm not really worried about the blog post itself. I'm much more interested in how the image ends up working. So let's go ahead and add these into our Django project. First and foremost, we need to make sure that they're in our installed apps, which in my case they are. Now I'm gonna go ahead and run my migration. So Python manage.py, make migrations, and we need to make sure that we're in the root of our Django project. Let's try those migrations again, and then Python manage.py, migrate. Now we're gonna set up Cloudflare images and .env, or your environment variables. Now the key things about this .env is so that your API key and your Cloudflare email don't get leaked. The other things are really public information. They're read only information as we'll see once we actually start using them. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy these values and we'll go into our local project here. I'm gonna create .env and we're gonna paste this in. Now this should work cross-platform, Mac, Linux, Windows, Windows subsystem for Linux. This is basically a way that we can store our environment variables in our project and how we load them in is by using Python decouple. Now you might already know this because when you went through the setup process, you would have already installed a few things related to it, but you don't have anything configured just yet. We will still configure those things. We're not gonna do it at this point. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna configure things right inside of Cloudflare. So right now is a good time to actually sign up for Cloudflare if you don't already have an account and then you're gonna to want to navigate from your Cloudflare account all the way down into images. In here, you'll probably have to sign up for an account itself for images, which I think the lowest plan that does everything is $5 a month. It's well worth it to save a bunch of time 
And this is the point of watching this one is to save a bunch of time and also still have very effective use of your images that will also be much faster for your users and thus saving even more time, not just for you. Okay, so the idea then is once you log in, you will have an account ID in here. So if you copy that account ID and you bring it into .env, there's your account ID. Next up is the account hash also in there. You're gonna bring that in and put it in to that in variable as well. The final one is gonna be your Cloudflare image domain. This is gonna be different depending on where you are, but if you see the image delivery URL in here, you're gonna go ahead and paste that in here and you're just really looking for the domain itself. Nothing else in there. We'll talk about those things in a little bit, but the main point is right now all we have is read only items. So these are gonna be public information altogether because this is what you'll end up using to actually display any image that you want to use. Now, we could actually make it where these are private images. We're gonna be just doing public images altogether because again, it's for blog posts. Now, what things that we need to hide or abstract away are gonna be our API key and our Cloudflare email or our Cloudflare user account. So the way we're gonna do this, of course, is by creating an API key first. So we'll go into our user here on Cloudflare, click on my profile, click on API tokens. We wanna to generate a new token here. So I'm gonna go ahead and create this token and I'm gonna scroll all the way down to a custom token and we'll go ahead and hit get started here. Now the point of this is to go into your permissions for your account. You're gonna to want to go down, you're gonna to want to select the Cloudflare images and you're gonna to wanna to select edit. So on our Django project, we need to be able to edit these images. If you need to have some way to sign the images, you would actually create a new token and that's a read-only token, so you can actually sign private images so you'd be able to see them. You won't need to edit them at that point. Next up, I'm only gonna include my single account for this. I don't need to include other accounts that my profile might be used to. And then of course, we're gonna go ahead and call this CF Django Images, as in Cloudflare Django Images or coding for Django Images. Either way, we're gonna go ahead and do that. So those are the only permissions we need for this. And we also might wanna consider having a time to live as in maybe we want this to expire October 1st. And so basically every month you would basically have a new one. I'm actually not gonna do that. I uh, don't actually want expiration. So I'll go ahead and refresh this and we'll leave it without an expiration. So I'll go ahead and, and just do it all over again. So there is no expiration on here whatsoever. Uh, but I grab Cloudflare images, go to edit, add my account, and there we go. So now I'm gonna go ahead and continue to the summary and we'll go ahead and create this token. So this token itself, we do not wanna share with anyone, of course, unless we know what they're doing with it. And we could always delete it later if we need to, which of course I have to do because I'm currently sharing you my actual token. Okay, so there's my token in there, no big deal. Next up, I'm gonna grab my email, which is right here and right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab that and save it just like this. And there we go. So now we have all of that configured and ready to go. Now, keep in mind, I wanna reiterate the fact that yes, doing Cloudflare images by default, the default plan does cost $5 a month. You could use your own storage, but using your own storage is, adds complexity to what we're doing here. Although it might be use, useful to do at some point, but really a million images for $50 a month is amazing. That's really inexpensive given what it can do with all of the various variants. So keep that in mind when you go to choose which plan you wanna do. We're gonna stick with just that $5 a month plan. This will cover a lot of different projects. That's the other thing, is you don't have to do this per project. You can use this on all of your different Django projects as you see fit. You can use it in FastAPI, you can use it in Next.js, Node.js, there's a lot of different places that you can end up using this with basically the same th things at $5 a month as well, which is pretty nice. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and start implementing this now. Now we're gonna create a Python request function to upload a image file directly to the Cloudflare image service. Now the idea here is actually coming directly from this use API and this curl command. So we're basically going to be implementing this curl command into Python or more specifically Python requests, but then inside of a Django project because it works a little bit differently than just pure Python as we'll see because of how we configure it. So it has to do with all of these environment variables right here. Typically speaking, when you have a Django project, 
all of your setup, all of your configuration lives inside of settings.py. Now there are caveats to this every once in a while, but we wanna stick with that convention. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy all of these environment variables. I'm gonna go to the bottom of settings.py and I'm gonna paste them in. Now naturally we don't actually want to hard code any of this stuff in here, right? We want to actually just make sure that we don't do that ever. Now, one of the things we probably could hard code, which would not be that big of a deal, is the Cloudflare image domain. So I'll kind of keep that in mind as I use Python decouple. So in the requirements, we have Python decouple here. This is so we can load in environment variables. There's a lot of different ways on how you can load in environment variables. I like Python decouple for a number of reasons. We'll see one right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and import Python decouple and we'll go ahead and do from decouple, import config. And then we're just gonna go ahead and scroll all the way back down and use config here. So here's the reason why I like Python decouples because I can use config and then I can set a default value here for it. And we'll come in here. And the environment variable itself is gonna be the Cloudflare image domain. In other words, the same value that's in .env or the same value that would be in os.environ, which is another way to grab environment variables there's a, there's a number of ways to do it in Python. I really like this one because I can have this default value, but also in the case of something like our debug mode, I can actually do something like the config and then Django debug, and then I can cast this as a Boolean value and the default being true at this point. So that's another reason why I like it is because I can cast different values in here in my environment variables. That being said, feel free to use whatever you'd like. In our case, I wanna actually figure out or finish out the rest of these items in here, which I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste directly from the blog post so I don't have anything hard-coded in here at all. Okay, so the other part about the decouple that's really nice is if these aren't actually in your environment, it will raise an error with Django. So for example, if I change this to uh, Cloudflare email two, and then I go to run the Django project with just simply Python manage.py run server, I'm gonna get an error saying that it's not found. This is great so that when I start it up, I wanna make sure that I have, definitely have something like this in the case of Cloudflare, I wanna make sure that those are available to the environment itself, even if they're incorrect. Okay, so with this in mind, let's go ahead and start the process for our image upload. And so I'm gonna go ahead and come into images here. We're gonna create services.py. Services.py will help us with all sorts of things. Now, of course, like in true copy and paste blog post action, I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste this function here so we can talk about it. Now, this URL, this comes directly from the use API. It's this URL right here. So if you came in here and actually just replaced it, you could see it's basically the same thing. The only difference here is this actually is using the Django configuration settings that actually grabs the Cloudflare ID. Now we could pass that as arguments in here as well if you wanted to make this a lot more reusable. I don't need to because it's gonna be worked in Django itself. And given that I'm using Python decouple, I feel confident that I can just use settings.cloudflare account ID or settings.cloudflare API key because those are in there based off of that. Great, and that's it. That's all we need to do to upload an image. This is gonna be the actual file image as we'll see very soon to get that. Now, since I'm at it, I'm also gonna go ahead and add in one more thing related to the images and configuration, and that is get image URL from Cloudflare. This is the read-only stuff, including the image ID. So if you needed to have private images themselves, this is actually where you could end up signing it in there as well. So if the image is private or you just need to do it, you could either make another version of this function or you could just sign all of your API keys as well. Um, that's a little bit more advanced and outside the scope of this one. But the idea is, once again, we're using the Cloudflare image domain, Cloudflare images domain, make sure that those are the same. And then of course the account hash, and this will actually give us that full URL that we saw before, that we started using this image delivery URL. What do you know, if I come in here and paste this in, it's quite literally the same thing. It's just now it's based off of all of our environment variables instead of a, once again, hard coding it. Great, so now that we've got this, we want to actually start implementing this into our Django project. Now at this point, if you haven't done so already, make sure you run Python manage.py migrate. Of course, we did do that together, but I'm also gonna go ahead and do create super user so that I can actually log in to the Django admin so we can actually start experimenting with uploading files 
in the very near future. Now we're gonna go ahead and add in the blog post model into our Django admin. Now I will say before I jump in, in the reference blog post on my website, there is a lot of this stuff for the image model itself. You can do a lot of these same things twice if you need to upload one-off images. In this video, I'm just gonna be doing the blog post stuff itself. Now, first and foremost, what we wanna do in admin.py inside of our blog app, I'm gonna go ahead and do from dot models. We're gonna import our blog post and then I'm gonna create the blog post admin and it's gonna be admin and then dot model admin. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and declare the fields that I want, the basic ones at first, which is gonna be an iterable of some kind. It can be a list, it can be a tuple, either one. I'm gonna go ahead and say the title and then I'm also gonna say content. Now, I have a couple different ways on how we can register this in the admin. In the past, I also always did admin.site.register, the model itself, and then the actual class itself. But there's actually a little bit more of an effective way to do this, which is using the decorator of admin.register and then just putting the blog post itself. This to me is a lot cleaner, so it's the way I'm working towards at this time. So once I save this, and assuming that my Django project is still running, and I have a Django model admin. I wanna make sure that I actually bring in the model down here as well. Let's go ahead and save that and then refresh on our run server. I'm gonna go ahead and actually take a look at the model admin. So with my Django project running, I'll go over into the admin, I'll log in and I can see that there's blog posts in here. If I go to try and add a blog post, this is all I get. Now, of course, the reason this is all I get is because those are the only fields I declared here. If I comment out these fields, I get other fields in here as well, including the image field and the author field, right? So maybe I want the author field in here, but I probably don't want the image field, not like this at least. I wanna be able to actually upload the image itself. So back into my fields here, I'll put in content uh, and then I'll also do the author and then maybe some read only fields in here, whatever read only fields that you might wanna have. So like in our models, we've got timestamp and updated. Perhaps you wanna have those in there as well. So timestamp, and then updated. And so what we see then is in our read only, we should see exactly this. Oh, assuming that I bring in these fields on here as well. And we can see that there's my read only. Of course, I don't actually have anything yet. So I'll just go ahead and say hello world and then ABC123. And I'll put my author as my default author. We'll hit save and continue. And that's pretty much it. Now, this right here is a Django model form. That's what it is in the underlying functionality that's there. Except the Django admin can do a lot of these things for us out of the box without us designing our own form. Now, this is actually really nice for fast prototyping of data and also, well, just leveraging things that the Django admin does really well. As soon as we wanna bring this into the front end into a Django project itself, where we manage all of the views and all of the forms, this isn't gonna cut it. In fact, it doesn't even cut it in the Django admin as it stands right now for our image. We wanna have a file field that can actually upload a new image for this blog post. And then we also want to display that image right in line. Both things I need to do. And of course they are in the reference blog post itself. But the idea here is we need an actual file field to upload our image. And then we need to use our Python service. So let's take a look at how we can build out the actual field for this, the form that will be integrated with the Django admin itself. Now we're gonna bring in a Django model form into our Django admin. Now, of course, the Django model form is far more useful across all of Django than just for the Django admin. Like if you were to start out building out views and even on API endpoints, you can use a Django model form. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and end up doing here. We're gonna create forms.py. We'll go ahead and do from Django, we're gonna import forms, and then we'll do from dot models. We're gonna import the blog post model, and then we'll go ahead and create our blog post form, which is gonna be forms.model form. And then I'm gonna declare class meta, and then the model being the blog post itself, of course, and then the fields that we wanna use in here. In this case, I'm just gonna do title and author. The reason for this is to make sure that the blog post form is working correctly. So once I have that, I'm gonna jump into admin.py and I'll go ahead and do from.forms. We're gonna import the blog post form. And so the model is no longer necessary. And now I can just bring in form equals to the blog post form. 
So now let's go ahead and make sure that our server is still running. Looks like it is. I'm gonna refresh on my blog post admin and the content is still showing up. This is the reason I actually put only title and author in forms.py is because the content should not show up. And really the content's coming through because this is actually overriding the content in the form it's, as well. This is where a lot of the Django model stuff is actually really great. So if you did wanna have the content there for sure, this would be a way to do that. But of course, I actually wanna build out the Django blog post model form itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use that one. As soon as I do that and refresh, I can see that that field has gone away. And so back into the forms itself, I actually want to reorganize this to be author, title, and gonna be content in here, just like that. We'll save that and then we can refresh in here. And there we go, a little bit closer to what I want in terms of editing the content. But the reason to do this is not because we wanna have another way to declare fields, but rather that we wanna have a field that is not a part of the Django model. So if we look at the model in here, I don't have a field called image file, for example. So in the blog post form, I'm gonna go ahead and create image file, and this is gonna be equal to forms.image field, and it's gonna be required being false. Let's leave it in as off, great. So with this in mind, I actually wanna get this image file whenever I call define save, whenever I run the save method on this form itself. So by default, what happens with a save method, like if you did something like form.save uh, like, or form.isValid, if you did those sorts of things in a view, this is what we're gonna override in here. So the first thing is gonna be grabbing the instance itself, which is just simply super dot save, calling the model form class, the default save method here, commit being false as well. The actual default for the save should actually be true, believe it or not. And so we've got the instance in here. Then we come down and we say if commit, then we do instance dot save, and then we return back the instance. So I actually didn't change anything in here just yet, but I will, I actually want to grab the image file. Now this is identical to doing on the view form.isValid, but the reason we do it in the model form is so that it works every time I wanna use this form over and over again. There are other ways to do this, of course, but this I think is a really good way to do it. Now, once we see this image field here, we wanna make sure of something as well. We wanna run pip install pillow. Uh, if you haven't done it already, this is the Python image library. It is the new version of pill. But the idea is we install pillow and then we just do dash dash upgrade. That will make sure that both of those things are installed and you can use something like an image field. Now, before I actually implement this image file field itself, I wanna point out that you absolutely could still have an image field in your Django model in addition to what we're about to do. It's outside the scope of what I wanna do, but if you wanted to have a backup of the raw file itself, you to totally could do that. Like you could upload it to Cloudflare R2, for example, with Django storages. I've got a whole series on that. But the idea being, I actually wanna stick with just the image file itself and just Cloudflare images. So what do we do here? How do we actually get this image file? Well, it works off of image file equals to self.cleaneddata.get the image file. And then we can actually see what this ends up looking like. So I'll go ahead and save that. Let's make sure that everything's working on the Django admin. Looks like it is, I'm gonna refresh here. There's my image file, I'm gonna go ahead and grab one directly from the desktop. Hey, what do you know, it's an image for this blog post. I'm gonna go ahead and save it and hit save and continue. Notice the file goes away, that's totally fine. I'm okay with the file going away. The important part is in my print statement, I can see that this is actually a file. So what we should understand now is, hey, I now have an image file. Let's go one step further and let's actually upload it to Cloudflare Images by using this service that I created, this upload to image to Cloudflare service, because hey, what do you know? Image file, we can open it and then go ahead and upload it. Let's try that out right now. So back into forms.py, we're gonna go ahead and do from images.services, we're gonna import that upload image to Cloudflare service, and then we're gonna go ahead and upload this image itself. Now what should come back is a Cloudflare ID, and so we're gonna go ahead and print out that ID as well. And heck, I might as well also print out the Cloudflare image based off of that ID as well. So let's go ahead and bring that one in here also, just to make sure that we have the ability to see what the URL ends up being. So let's go ahead and say my uh, image 
URL is equal to that Cloudflare ID. And then we'll print that out as well to just see the whole thing working before we make, clean this up and make it a little bit better. Okay, so back into our blog post here, I'm gonna change it once again. I will upload that image once again and hit save and continue. So what I should see in the terminal is, there you go, there's the image, the original image file, the Cloudflare ID, there it is. And here is the public image that I can now open up and take a look at. And if everything was done correctly, there is our image. So if you don't see this image, then of course there's a bunch of things you'll need to diagnose to make sure that this part is working. But now that we've got this, it's just a matter of improving it a little bit in the Django admin so that we can see a few other things related to this. In our blog post model, we have a foreign key to the image model for good reason. So if we actually take a look at our image model, in there we've got this, hey, what do you know, Cloudflare ID that we can reference. Of course, our form has already created a Cloudflare ID. So now I just wanna go ahead and create an instance inside of my image model so that I can keep track of these Cloudflare IDs and more importantly, keep track of them for any given blog post for that to be actually rendered. So the way this is gonna happen is inside of forms.py, we're just gonna make a small change here. So we'll go ahead and do from images.models, we're gonna go ahead and import the image model itself. Then down here, I'm gonna go ahead and start creating it. The idea then is if the image file even exists, we'll go ahead and say if image file, I'll go ahead and tab all of these things over. Of course, I want to upload the image file, that's a given. The next thing that I wanna do is get rid of these print statements here. Then I'm gonna go ahead and actually bring in the image object. So I'll just go ahead and say image obj created equals to image.objects. Now I'm gonna do git or create and I'm gonna do it based off of this blog post. So I'll go ahead and say title equals to self.cleaned data dot get the actual title itself. Now doing dot clean title dot get is very similar to what we have up here. But the thing is this title is required. So I can actually use brackets here knowing that this title is a required field of the blog post itself. So if I look in the blog post, this is a required field. If it was not required, then I would use dot get and have some fallback or some other method of actually storing this image. Next up, what I wanna do is add in something for defaults here. And this is gonna be for the Cloudflare ID, and it's gonna be equal to that Cloudflare ID. Okay, we'll see what this is in just a second, but the idea is now I've got this image object, I'm gonna go ahead and set it to my instance dot image, and it's gonna be that right there. Now, of course, I can still get this image URL, but I probably won't do it in this way going forward. So I'll go ahead and save it just like this, and now I'm gonna go ahead and refresh in here. I'm gonna go ahead and upload that file once again, hit save and continue. This time it should actually have added into the actual image itself, or I should have it in the image field itself. So let's go ahead and actually go into images admin. I'll just go ahead and do from.models, import you know, the image. And then now I'm actually gonna use image.site.register just to grab that image itself and not do a whole image class, but rather just to be able to see that, hey, hello world has an image and there it is. Okay, cool. So with this in mind, I actually want to render out this image just a little bit differently. I wanna actually display this image inside of the image admin. Going back into the blog post admin, we're gonna go ahead and display our image in here. So inside of our fields, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in a bunch of different fields in here. Of course, these are fields related to the blog post form and the blog post model. So the fields that I want are gonna be in order of the way I want them, which I'm gonna do author, title, content. I also wanna bring in the image file in here. So we'll go ahead and bring that one in as well. And there we go. So I got a few things related to this. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna define something called display image. And it's gonna take in self and object. And basically we'll go ahead and say, if not object.image, then we'll go ahead and return no image, something like that, or no image uploaded. Otherwise, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the image URL. What is this gonna be based off of? Well, once again, we'll go into from our images.services, we'll import get image from Cloudflare. So the image URL is gonna be based off of that itself. Well, actually we need to get the Cloudflare ID, which is coming from object.image.cloudflare ID. Now, why is it coming from that? Once again, we've got our blog post model. This is gonna be the object we're working off of. 
The image model is that dot image, right? So we've got dot image right here, which is of course a foreign key to this image model, which has a field called Cloudflare ID. Of course, we already created that. We already saw that. We did all of that right in here, but I just wanted to reiterate it right now so it's not unclear as to where this Cloudflare ID is coming from. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that and there we go. We now have our image URL, which means that I can create something like my image HTML, which I'm gonna go ahead and put in raw HTML in here, which is image SRC. And I'm just using some string substitution in here to be able to bring in the image URL itself, which actually means that I want to use single string on the outside so that I have double quotes inside of the image itself, just like that. And I basically want to return back this image HTML. I'll leave it as is for just a moment. Then I'll also go ahead and add in something called display image dot short description. And we'll call this our current image. Okay. And so I actually want to have the display image right next to the image file somewhere, right? So I'm going to go ahead and put it right after that image file. And we'll put that display image in there just like that. So we'll go ahead and save it and we'll refresh in here. And we've got unknown field here. And let's go ahead and make sure that we named it correctly. So display image should be all across the board. And I realized why we need this in as a read only field as well, because it's not actually a, a field of the Django image or the Django model or anything like that. This is a custom field that I'm making off one off the bat just for the Django admin so we can render it. Once we do that, we can see there is the image itself. But of course, it's actually just the raw HTML. So one of the things we can bring in is a method that allows for this to happen inside of the Django admin, which is a function called format HTML, which we can then wrap around that final image HTML itself to make sure that it is safe and we can actually render it out. And there we go. So the problem that we have right now is that it's huge, it's massive. It's way too big to be rendered inside of the admin. We wanna have a thumbnail. Now, of course, one of the things that you could do here is you could change the width and the height of it. So let's say width of 500, let's do double quotes and do, or let's do 320, for example. We'll save that and refresh in our admin. And there we go, there's a smaller image. Technically speaking, it's smaller, but the actual image itself is not smaller. So if we go into inspect the element here, we can see the image uh, you know, size, the rendered size is smaller, but the intrinsic size, the actual size of the image is much bigger. So we wanna change that. We wanna make sure that they are aligned. They are the same or at least close to the same based off of how we want to render them. But it's pretty nice that we can run arbitrary HTML code inside of the Django admin and this is how you do it. So I actually wrote some HTML here and boom, there we go. Now it's all rendered out. But at this point, it's time to actually create some variants inside of Cloudflare. Let's take a look at how we do that. It's very easy as we'll see. Now, once again, in the Django admin, we see that the intrinsic size is 1200 by 630. And if I look at the details of this image on my local machine, I see that the dimensions are 1200 by 630. So this is already scaled down a little bit, but it's not scaled down in a size that makes sense for the context that it's in. So we wanna make sure that that happens. And the way it's done is by using Cloudflare images and variants. So if we look at the default variant, this will actually scale down things for us already. So if we go in here to edit, we can see that there is already a scaling option, but our image right now is already below the scale that we have right here. So what we wanna do is we wanna add in a new variant here. I'm gonna go ahead and add a new variant. We're gonna give it a name, make sure you add a name here. I'm gonna call this like admin, like the Django admin variant, if you will. I'm gonna go ahead and add this new variant in here and I wanna give it a size. So I'm gonna go ahead and say 320 by 320. We'll see what this does in a second, but overall it's gonna use one of these as our maximum value. So I'm gonna go ahead and we will, we can always allow public access if we want to. I'm gonna leave it as is based off of what we've got. We don't need to customize anything. I don't need it blurred or anything like that. You totally could, which is pretty cool. But the idea here is we create a variant, boom, I now have a variant option. Where do I use this or how do I use this? This is the reason I think that you end up using Cloudflare images altogether. We go into our admin here um, where we actually stored this for our blog. We scroll down to where our actual Git URL message was. 
we add in the argument that we already started, which was simply variant. And now I can just put in admin, just that simple. Now it's important to note that the actual service itself has that ability. It has the ability to change it in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this and then I'll go back into my blog post. I'll do a quick refresh in here. And then now I'll go ahead and inspect the element here. I'll go into the image itself. What do you know? Rendered size 320 by 168. There is no intrinsic size. It's quite literally that size. That is exactly how big the image is now because of these variants. And it happened like that. Amazing. Let's go ahead and take a look at blurred. We'll just go ahead and say blurred. I'm gonna add this new variant here. Once again, I will leave it, I'm gonna do 320 again. This would probably be more like admin blurred, but let's just do it like this. I'm gonna go ahead and go full blur. Or, or let's do half blur or like a little bit of blur so we can still sort of make out what's going on. I'm gonna save this and we'll use that as our variant now inside of the admin. Let's go back up and we'll go ahead and do that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and come in here and into our admin. What do you know? There it is. It is nice and blurred. Naturally, I want to leave the admin. It is as the admin itself. But overall, that's how simple it is. This is the big reason that you use Cloudflare, among many other reasons. It is obviously a lot faster. It's going to be cached. The image will load much faster in the future going forward as well. But now, every time we want to upload an image, we could just send it over to Cloudflare and use that as our display image always. And of course, the method would be roughly like this. Now, you could also think of this in terms of in the blog itself, you could have a bunch of different methods here or a bunch of different variants that you might want to have on here to do the same thing. So for example, if you defined like display image admin, this would return back that same idea, right? And so I'm going to go ahead and just implement that really quickly by grabbing the image from Cloudflare bring it back in here, save that image URL. First off, we have to get the, uh, we'll say if not self.image, then we'll return none, or maybe just an empty string here. Then we'll go ahead and get the Cloudflare ID equals to self.image.cloudflare ID. Then we'll go ahead and return back that image ID, and then the variant itself of simply admin. And then that is now the display image admin that we could then go and use wherever we want to. Now, the other thing is we could think about this in terms of importance for the variants themselves. So you might have something like allowed variants and I'm gonna just put it in like this. I would probably actually call it more like caps allowed variants and just saying something like public and admin. And then basically if variant in allowed variants, then we'll go ahead and say variant equals to, you know, variant or display variant. Let's change this to uh, final variant. Otherwise, the final variant is simply public, the default one that comes in. This is something else that I would probably consider doing just to make sure that I don't actually have accidental variants somewhere. And naturally, this method itself could have multiple, you know, different options that you might want to use depending on the context you're trying to load the image itself, right? So like if somebody's gonna purchase the image, for example, you might actually use that blurred variant, but in the admin, you probably never wanna use that blurred variant or accidentally use it, in which case you'd have different services or different functions with different allowed variants in there uh, as you see fit. But that's just a simple way to go about doing this. Uh, we've got our admin stuff. Let's make sure that everything's saved up and it will actually load. That's peculiar, it's not actually loading in here right now. Let's see why the variant, ah, I see why. It's giving me the wrong thing. Let's go back into our services. Hopefully some of you caught this, but this should be variant uh, equals to a lot. There we go, so there, that, that, that should solve that problem. Okay, so that's it. That's actually allowing us to do all of these different variants. Naturally, there's a lot of different things that you can do with this. There's more variants that you can build out, and there's probably other things that are coming down the line for how you can actually use the various images in here. And naturally, you can still go into Cloudflare, look at any given image, and you can grab all that same sort of stuff with all the variants that are available to it, and just take a look at it that way as well. It's pretty fantastic. I highly recommend using it 
and your projects to just speed up your site, speed up SEO, improve your SEO, do all of the good things that you wanna do with your images. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you got a lot out of this one and thanks to Cloudflare for sponsoring this series. Now, if you wanna see other things built in Cloudflare, please let me know in the comments. But the idea here of using Cloudflare images specifically is yes, things are cached, so that means they're gonna be a lot faster. But also you have all those variants of your images so you can render them in multiple ways given the context. So if you have a thumbnail, yeah, you could do that and you can do it really, really quickly, which is why I really like it and why I'm gonna experiment that much more with it myself to improve my applications. And I hope you do as well. Let me know if you have any questions and I look forward to seeing you the next time. My name is Justin Mitchell. Thanks again.